Tina, Chad Grigsby. So we're going to Gunnersville, stop number four. Um, we take off, we stop at my buddy Skip's again. He's kind of a 10, 12 hour drive, so it's nice to have guys around the country where you can just do a little pop in. I just texted him the day before, yep, he's home. Have it's a little cookout. Get to go fishing on the pond. Take a little rest off, get up in the morning and do it again. How you doing? I'm good, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Skip! Chad! What's up, buddy? What'd be? Finally, we made it. And then, yeah. and then we get to the Dick's exit and it's closed. So we have to go, and they got it all tore up. Huh! It's the inaugural run of the trigger. Well, I did the run through where you cook it for 30 minutes on 450 to burn all those oils and stuff off, but here we go. Get ready for some chicken. Turn it off. What's, Eric, what's circle? Uh, Circle's uh, off, right? Or no? Uh, try the other one. Try the other one. Yeah, it, yep. It'll, it's on. Yeah. yeah, you got power. Well, We'll crank her up to about 325. There you go. They are perfect. Time to eat. Get up early, head down to Gunnersville, and we meet Daryl and uh, his wife. They're they're just a little bit behind us and uh, we're meeting at the place we're staying and it's actually it's Chris Lane's uh, place right on the water right at Gunnersville. It's a sweet little place. No one's ever stayed in it before he kind of fixed it up. It's going to be one of his uh, I think it's a rental or something that he got and he kind of fixed up so we were kind of his guinea pig and he shows up in his cool little truck and uh, walks us through the house. He he uh, you know showed us where everything is and we get settled in there. What do you give him on that dismount? That was a negative three. I didn't even know you could go negative. It wasn't a real good toss. Oh, sure. Blame the throw. He didn't have to say something.
You know, if this was the tournament, you'd have broke them off by now. Oh, yeah, three times. It's bigger than four feet right now. Practice is over. The guys at Traeger sent us a, the portable Traeger, super cool. On our day off, we hung out on the back porch and, and grilled a bunch of chicken up, so we had that for dinner. And then we actually had you know leftovers for during the tournament. You just when you sit down to move spots, you can just grab a hunk of chicken and eat it and throw the bone out in the lake. So that was nice of them to, to send us that, and uh, that's going to come in real handy throughout the year. So Thursday's first day of the event, uh, kind of have a little game plan. I, I'm catching enough fish to, you know, I know the potential's there to have a pretty good stringer. And I'm not like crushing them or anything, I, and I didn't think that I was, but just try to be consistent, catch your five and see where it puts you. So run up to Honeycomb, had a pretty good little stretch down through there where he had a lot of bites, and right away started catching them.
you what he work on. He got me five. He, he agrees there is five. 14 pounds, 10 ounces today, Chad. Thank you, sir. Thank you, buddy. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be right here. Actually, I'll be back behind there. Yeah. I'll see you. Had a pretty good little limit, and then we had, you know, something went wrong with the live well. It kicked off, or, you know, something had a couple fish die. Just one of those things that happens in tournament fishing, you know, it just sucked, you know, and I looked at, looked in there and, you know, a couple of them are dead, and then, of course, they penalize you if they're dead. So, I uh, went to weigh in, had 1511, and then they deducted, you know, whatever our deduction was, so it dropped me 15 spots, or, you know, it's kind of just one of those deals that sucks, but nothing, I, I didn't realize it at the time until I went back there and, and checked on them. And you can't just go back and look at your fish every five minutes, I mean, you, you got to rely on your equipment, and it just... You know, something happened, it shorted out, and we got it fixed, so it uh, wasn't a major deal, but it did drop me down a pound, so uh, that sucked. Just one of those deals, nothing you can do about it now.
losses yesterday. Going to be right there with it again today. 14-7 on day two, Grigsby. 29-1. Yeah, I just never got big bites. I, I caught a lot of fish. Just fish is, uh, the fish is great. You can fish deep, you can fish shallow. And I caught a lot of fish. I just never got any big ones. I had them in practice. It was pretty easy to practice. And then I where they went, I think they meandered off the deep water and I did it. Little meandering session right there, man. Pleasure. Meandering. We, uh, we go back at it. And, you know, I'll go down some stretches there where I had some really good bites and just, it was kind of more of a struggle the second day to get uh, not only big bites, but just bites in general. They just weren't biting as good. And I don't know why. And it could have been just for where I was, you know. I'm sure guys probably thought the second day was better than the first day. But And then I run into, I actually go and I fish my little stretches and then I just go, I went sight fishing, found a, another three and a half pounder, caught it. Uh, called out one with that. Actually, I think the three and a half was my limit fish. And uh, then just went and looked for some more. And then, of course, I run into Bobby and he uh, he's asking me if I'm catching him. Uh, no, not really. And he figured it, he, he found a couple brim beds and he had 20 pounds or whatever he had. Actually, when I talked to him, he had like 22. So then we go look for brim beds and, you know, that's kind of hard to do when you got three hours left to fish. But I did realize where I started that was a brim bed, so I pulled the trolling motor and drive the 20 minutes up back up to Honeycomb and throw my wacky worm out there. Sure enough, catch like a three and a half pounder right off the bat, and so that helped us. Caught three or four more in a row, actually, and no other ones helped us, but that was the only brim bed where I knew exactly where it was. And he had three or four marked, but you know, one was really good for him because he caught the majority of his weight off one brim bed. So that's what we had, and we had to go check in. Everything's good. Uh, wave 14 something and they like usually when you have 15 and 14 you're you're you know pretty good but they really caught them at Gunnersville and ended up just barely missing a check which sucked if we didn't have that malfunction we, we would have been just fine but it is what it is it that's just part of tournament fishing and uh, we should just should have caught more that's basically what it boils down to but it was a good event it was uh, had a lot of fun fish. I love fish, fishing Gunnersville and had a real nice place to stay. Uh, you know, I'd, I, if I, I'd like to do it over, you know, obviously when you know what's going on, you know, that's part of the part of the whole scheme of it. You got to figure it out when you're there, not after the fact where someone tells you. But uh, good for Bob because he figured it out and I think he finished second or third or something. I mean, he was way up there. He, he was had like 13 pounds the first day and then 20 and then 19 and then 20 some the last day so he did he had a real good event but um, the next one for us is the James River so we're gonna head there and uh, I've never been there which sometimes is a good thing you don't really know what to expect so go with an open mind and we're gonna see what we can do there